Sam said, she's like, Captain, my cap. Two minutes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All my early birds this morning. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's good to be in the house of the Lord and hear the bustle and hustle of voices and friends. It's, it's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. We want to welcome you today to Christian Assembly of Scholarly. We want to say good morning to the those that are here live in person and also thank those who are on Facebook with us today. Good morning and God bless you. And I'm telling you, it's exciting to hear the hustle and bustle, life and testimonies of those that are here today. We're wearing our masks. We're, we're doing all the social distancing, but we're hearing each other's stories. We're coming together. We're praying one for another. So we just again want to say God bless you and good morning. All my early birds today, all my early risers who didn't mind to, to move the clock a little forward, I thought as I did that last night, well, I didn't really do it. I looked down and Apple did it for me. As I looked at my Apple phone, I remember the words of Paul. I pressed towards a goal. Well, this morning we, we pressed towards the goal. And uh, before you know it, uh, the sun will be shining. The days will getting warmer. I heard a great testimony the other day. I heard that it will not get dark in, before 6 o'clock until November. So now it's going to stay light. To, wonderful. Amen. So God is good. We want to welcome you to the house of the Lord today. We want to celebrate the name of Jesus. We want to thank God you are here. And I want to thank all of you that prayed as I stepped out last week to preach for Giving the Nightmare Ministries. And I want to thank you for that. And I want to give you a quick testimony this morning. I want to let you know what you're allowing me to invest in. As I step out to be able to go to different churches to preach the testimony of Forgiving the Nightmare, as this church gives me the grace and the, and the gift to be able to go out and share, I want to let you know some of the things that come across our table, some of the things the Lord allows us to do. Last week as I was ministering in a church not unlike this one with people not unlike us, I had two encounters, and the first one I want to tell you about is a gentleman who, who came to the altar, and he said, Pastor, you can share my story. And he came to the altar, and he was hurting, and he was hurting for somebody else, and he, he let me know his brother just passed in a car accident. And his brother was killed in a car accident by a young man who, who may have been drinking too much, involved in too much craziness. And, and because of those decisions, there was an accident, and his brother lost his life. He came to the altar and he said, Pastor, will you pray with me? Because when we went to court the other day, the young man, the young man who took my brother's life, stood before our family and he wept and he begged for forgiveness. And this man who lost his own brother, this man who lost his loved one, stood there and prayed for the man who took his brother's life. Now he has to, he has to do what the legal system says. He has to face justice. He has to go through all that process. But the man who lost his brother, the man who took his life because of decisions and actions, stood there and said, Pastor, will you pray for that young man? 
Will you pray for that young man who took my, the life, that took the life of my brother? That's what forgiveness the nightmare does as we come together. Another woman, about 85 years old, came to the altar and she said, Pastor, will you pray with me because I want you to know I've never shared this before, but my testimony is your testimony. 85 years old, and that came out of her spirit. That came out of her heart. So you allow me to go out and share that. And I want to thank you for your prayers, for your support. And that's the testimony of Forgiving the Nightmare, that you partner with me so I can go out and share. But when I was there, I'm thinking of you. And I want to thank Pastor Lita who filled in for me last week. I know she did a great job and she had other people involved. So Pastor Lita, thank you so much for bringing forth the word of God. Thank you for being a part of this team. Aren't you blessed by her ministry and what God's doing? Yes, say amen to that because I thank God for what Pastor Lita is doing in the ministry she brings forth. So I want to let you guys know how you're blessing me and blessing Forgiving the Nightmare and together how God is blessing us all. The psalmist would say in Psalm 106, the psalmist would say in Psalm 106, he would say this, praise the Lord. Let me say that again. Praise the Lord. I, I don't know if we're sleeping this morning. I know we, we moved the clock a little bit. But it's time now for our spirit to rejoice, to arise now and sing, to give praises unto the Lord, to say God is worthy to be praised. So the psalmist would say in Psalm 106, praise the Lord. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is, he is good. Praise the Lord and give thanks to the Lord for he is good, good, good. We're not strangers. We're not far off. We're, we're children of God. We're servants of the Lord. We've been saved by His grace in this morning. Let us that have drank from the cup that never grows dry. Let us who have eaten the bread that always satisfies. Let us proclaim this morning and let us stand in that confession. Let us celebrate that. That our God is what? He is good. He is good. He is good. And He's worthy to be praised this morning. So today, let us echo those words that the psalmist said. Praise the Lord and give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. For His steadfast love endures for what? Ever. Forever. Come on, when I stumble and fall, when my faith isn't strong enough, when doubt rises up, when anger overcomes, when the flesh seems simple and easier to follow, I thank God that His love that endures forever. His love that endures forever. His love that endures forever. It's not built on what I do. It's built on what He's done. Amen? It's not built on what I have. It's built on what He's given. It's not built on my righteousness, but it's built on His gift. So this morning, church, those who have known Jesus Christ, those who believe in Jesus Christ, those who have accepted Jesus Christ, let us celebrate, let us proclaim, let us shout, let us be glad this morning, and let us praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And may we cry out and give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His steadfast love endures forever. It means God's love is going to endure any economic challenges, any political challenges, any physical challenges, any health challenges, God's love endures forever. And that's what our rock is. And that's what we're planted in. And that's who we are this morning. We're children of God, celebrating our Savior, giving praises unto His name. So let me invite you to stand with us this morning as we praise Him today, as we celebrate that steadfast love, as we give praises because our God is good. So this morning, praise Him. Praise Him. If you're in the valley, praise Him. If you're on the mountaintop, praise Him. If you're a season of need, praise Him. If you're celebrating, praise Him this morning because He is worthy, worthy, worthy to be praised because the flesh wants to distract you. The enemy wants to lie to you. But this morning, we've been created. We've been created to fellowship with our God. So come on, let's go. As He took Adam... In the cool of the day, it said, come and walk with me, Adam. 
Come and walk with me. Come on, Adam. Come on, man. Come and walk with me. I want to teach you. I want to bless you. I want to show you this morning. Will you come on that praise walk this morning? Because I believe God is here. And I believe God is saying, let's go for a walk. I want to come next to you. I want to touch you. I want to fill you. I want to inhabit the praises of my people this morning. Because the psalmist said, the Lord is good and worthy to be praised. Give the Lord a clap offering this morning, church. Oh, he is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy, Lord. Oh, you are worthy, Lord God. Oh, you are worthy, Lord God. Come on, enter in. He stands at the door knocking. Come on, church. Let's praise him this morning. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Lead us, team.
Yes, we worship the name above all names. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. Yes. We worship you this morning, yes. Lord. We give you praise and we give you glory. Yes. For you are our God and our Savior. You lead us, you guide us, you fill us, you touch us, you saved us and delivered us. God. Yes. We thank you, Lord God, because you're with us all. We praise you and we give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Last week I was sharing again the story of Forgiving the Nightmare about how I grew up in hurt and abuse and pain. And somebody came to me very strong in their personality. They came to me and they pulled me aside and they said, Pastor Mark, I want to ask you a question. And they were really frank and genuine about their question. And they, they said, how, with everything you've been through, all the hurt that you happened in your life, how can you trust God? With all the hurt, pain, rejection, fear, regrets, disappointments, how... Can you trust God? And I thought, well, that question just isn't for me. That question could be asked to any of us. With the hurts, the pains, the fears, the rejections, the insecurities, the regrets, the oh no's, the how comes. How can we stand here this morning and raise our hand? How can we truly trust in the grace and the cross? In the words and the spirit of God this morning. How can you? Let, picture with me this morning. If somebody pulled you aside and said, I know what you've been through. I, I, I know what's happened to you in your life. I know the pains and the hurts, the wounds and the fears. Tell me how. How? How? And I simply said, because when... I had nothing else. There was no plan B. There was no other choice. When I was in the fiery furnace, if God didn't show up, I was going to burn. And I learned to trust Him. I learned to trust Him. Not because I do everything right or well, because God died for us. So even though in this life there's been many troubles, even though there has been injustice and fears and pain and sorrows and disappointments and mistakes and things you wish you could do again or say again, I still trust in the name of the Lord. I still trust in the mighty word of God. I still trust in the spirit. I still trust in the cross this morning. So I'll ask you, with everything that's happened in your life, with everything that's happened, your loss, your ups and downs, financial and family, with everything that happened, how do you trust in the Lord? Because he died for us. We celebrate Jesus. Because he is worthy to be praised. So could we sing? You can stay seated. But could we sing that chorus of that last hymn? That last song we sang. Could we sing that chorus? Let's sing this chorus this morning. We run in and we trust and we know. Not because of what the world has shown us. Not because where the flesh has led us. Not because what the past has given us. Not because what they say. Those who don't know the grace and the mercy. But we stand. 
because we know him today. We know Jesus because he died for us. Sing it, team. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Worship his holy name. promises of God. Oh, I confess and I believe this morning that you are with us. Oh, Father, that you want to make a way, that you are the lifter of my head and the lover of my soul. Oh, we stand upon the rock today. Sing like never before. Oh, cry out in the Mohawk Valley because your remnants, your church, your people, your children, your bride cries out with praise unto the Lord this morning. And we won't let the thorns at our side, the disappointments and the fears hijack our praise today. Because the world didn't give me my praise, but the cross of Jesus Christ, the hope of the world, being anointed by the Spirit, filled us with a praise that they can't take away. And even though I limp, and even though I weary, my soul cries out. My soul cries out. My soul cries out this morning that our God is worthy to be praised. So I echo the words. I echo the words of the psalmist today. It's Psalm 106 when I say, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. He is good. He is good. He is good. In the middle of a pandemic, He is good. In the, in the middle of financial troubles, God is still good. In the middle of your problems and in your fears, God is still good because He's worthy to be praised. Who knows that this morning? Who knows it today? So we say, oh God, you are good in your steadfast love. Your steadfast love. See, I messed up a lot. How about you? Oh, Jean's not here now. Sorry. This one's messed up a lot. <laughs> I messed up a lot. I don't deserve this gift of salvation. See, I messed up a lot. I mean, a lot, lot. I'm a man of forked tongue and clay feet because of that steadfast love that endures forever. Forever. It's good for my children and my children's children. It was good for my parents and my grandparents. That steadfast love of God does not go away, but it's forever and always. So today, we're going to celebrate Jesus. We're going to celebrate that love. We're going to stand on that rock. And we're going to confess, we're going to confess Amen. he is worthy Amen. to be praised. Amen, church? Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a clap offering this morning. He is worthy to be praised. We are blessed by our worship team. Thank you guys for your faithfulness. Thank you so much.
Praise the Lord. Again, we want to welcome everybody here in the house of the Lord today. We want to welcome our friends on Facebook Live and those today that are in the house of the Lord and in person. Praise the Lord. Amen. God is worthy and he is good to be praised. We want to bring you to a handful of announcements and we're going to go to prayer today. There are some needs, there are some prayer requests that we're asking the Lord to touch, bless, and be with us. But before we do, we want to let you know how you can connect with us so we can connect with you. We're going to give you two great ways to connect with us so we can connect with you. First of all, go to Christian Assembly of Schuyler. Dot com. That's right, ChristianAssemblyOfSchuyler.com, and there you're going to find two great things I want to point out. Yes, you're going to find out who we are, our service times, our locations, but we want to point out two things you can find there. First, we want to let you know there's a place to leave a prayer request. People are leaving prayer requests. There are people in Florida and Texas and Ohio, Massachusetts and Maine, all around New York. There are people leaving prayer requests on our prayer request page. Some of it's, you know, remember, who, remember the prayer when we used to say uh, unspoken? Remember we used to raise our hand and say, Pastor, pray for me. What is it? It's an unspoken. That's because we didn't want everybody to know all the stuff we were going through, right? But there's some things going on uh, that people are leaving and say, you know what, I, I just I got an unspoken need, and we're praying for some. People are praying for loved ones and friends and family. So if you go to Christian Assembly of Schuyler, you'll find a place to leave a prayer request. We want to pray for you. We want to be a per- church that prays together. Also, we want to let you know if you go to Christian Assembly of Schuyler, there's a place to leave an offering. I want to thank this body, thank this church, thank this community that connects online or here in person for your support, financial support, for your gift for your offering, for your sacrifice to this body. Thank you for standing with us in such a time as this. You can give two ways. First of all, you can give in person. If you're here today, we have a box in the back. You can always do snail mail. Remember, we used to buy stamps, put it on envelope. You could do it that way. Or you can go to ChristianAssemblyOfSchuyler.com. At the bottom of our main page, our, our main page, there's a PayPal account. You can help us out that way. Also, if you want to find out more about me, go to Christian, go to ForgivenTheNightmare.com. ForgivenTheNightmare.com. It's my testimony. So two great ways to connect with us, ChristianAssemblyOfSchuyler.com and ForgivingTheNightmare.com. Hey, guys, there's a couple quick announcements. Again, May 26th at 6 p.m., May right 19th, I forgot, March. See, I knew it was an M1. <laughs> March 19th at 6 p.m. March 19th at 6 p.m., we are going to prayer. We are going to pray. Sister Patty, who has a heart for prayer. If you get to know Sister Patty, she's going to end up praying with you in about two seconds. After You're going to tell her your life story. She's going to say, let's pray. So, you know, she has a heart to lead a prayer meeting. So we want to let you know, March 19th at 6 p.m. until it's done or midnight, we're going to be praying again. So if you can come all night, if you come for an hour, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, half hour, but let us be a body that prays together. Amen. So March 19th at 6 p.m., come out and be a part of that. Also want to let you know, Monday night, 6.30, Monday night, 6.30, either in person or online, either in person or online at Facebook Live. We have a women's Bible study. My wife has been teaching it. It's great. Get plugged in with that. It's such a wonderful time. And Wednesday nights, we got a lot going on Wednesday nights. I'll let you know. Wednesday night, 6.30, we have Bible study, either in person or online. But if you come in person, we got two things I want to let you know. We have a ministry to our children. We are ministering through uh, missionettes or girls only and uh, Royal Rangers. And we want to let you know that if you come and be a part of that, the kids are wearing masks. They're staying six feet apart. They're washing hands. But you can come and be a part of that. Also, we have our youth ministry on Wednesday nights also. And also, we have our youth ministry on Sundays at 5 p.m. And let me tell you something about this youth ministry. Okay, these kids eat, you know, these kids chow down. All right, this church is feeding our kids pretty well. So they have a great time. They're eating some good food, but not only are they eating good food, but they're receiving good word. So praise the Lord. Sunday nights, 5 p.m., also Wednesdays at 630 for our children's ministries and our Bible study. So some great things to stay plugged in with us so we can stay plugged in with you. We're also praying. There are some needs today that we want to pray for. Uh, 
Kira, as many of us love our, our sister Kira, she's such a great kid growing up in the Lord. We love her mom. We love her family. We love all that. And Kira is in the hospital right now. She has an infection from a, a tooth, and they're trying to bring down that infection. We've been praying for her, praying for mom, praying for the family. I assume they're probably even watching today. So we want to let you know we're going to be praying for Kira in just a little bit. We love her. Uh, for those of you who are going, well, which teenager is that? Sometimes if you don't go to youth group, you go, which one's that? A few weeks ago, uh, Pastor Lita was sharing, and we had an artist up front that was painting a picture. That was, that was Kira. So if you don't know who she is, she loves the Lord. She's solid for Jesus. Uh, she's a fun person to be with. She's growing up in the name of Jesus Christ, holding to the God's word. And we're going to be praying for a healing of this affection in her jaw. Amen. Also, we're going to be praying for those in our body who are still wrestling with cancer. I know God can heal. How about you? I know God can heal. So we thank God for Miss Paulette, and we're praying with her as she wrestles this battle. Miss Paulette, we love you. It's good to see you in the house of God. We're praying the Lord gives you strength and rest and peace and heals you in the name of Jesus. We're also praying for others, Miss Gina and Mr. Sam. We're praying for uh, Miss Cheryl, who watches us online. We're praying for her and many others. But I am praying for our nation. How about you? I'm praying for a revival to come across our land again. I'm praying that hearts of men and women will turn back to God. Families and people will come to a God that loves them, that will know the love and the grace and the mercy of the cross. So I'm praying for a revival. I know we can, I believe one. I believe in a revival. How about you? But I believe that today. So I'm praying not only for unity, I'm praying for a revival, but I'm praying for those who are sick in body too. So lots going on. So you just stay plugged in with us, but we want to turn our hearts now to the word of God. Amen. And we want to pray for these needs. So let us pray one more time and ask the Lord to bless us. Amen. Father God, we come to you this morning, and we thank you for all that you've done today. We thank you for the sweetness of worship and, the, and to step into your glory, God. We thank you, Lord God, you help us tear down our walls and to build up our altars that we praise you on, Lord. So, Father, today we gather in the name of Jesus. Father God, we gather today and we lift up your name and we pray thy will be done, Lord. Father, give us the courage to pray your will be done. Give us the courage to receive and to walk in your will, Lord God. Forgive me for the times, Lord God, when I want to make your will my will, when I manipulate your ways to become my ways. But, Father, I pray this morning, Lord, that I will stand in the promises, the grace, and the mercy, and the obedience of the Word of God this morning. So, Father, give us the courage to pray, and give us the hope to know, and give us the faith to have, Lord God, that you are in the center of all that we pray today. And may we glorify you, Father. May we glorify you in our celebration, and may we glorify you in our tears, Lord. May you be lifted up, for today is the day of salvation. So, Lord, this morning we lift up our nation. Father, we lift up our nation. May we love thy neighbor again, Lord. Father God, may we pray for our nation today. We pray for our leaders. We pray for our, for our first responders and our teachers and our students, Lord, for our doctors and nurses, for our politicians, Lord God. We pray for President Biden, Lord God, this morning, that you bless and you touch this man, Lord. And I pray for a nation, Lord God, that turns their heart to you, Lord. We pray for the remnants to rise up, Lord God, and proclaim your name in love and hope, Lord, so today, Lord, we pray today that you're with us. Bring that revival, Lord, a revival like we've never seen before. Oh, Father, I thank you for the first great awakening and the second great awakening. Lord, I, I thank you for the Jesus movement, but Lord, Father, I pray today that you move in a fresh way, that, Father, you grow, touch the hearts of every generation, from the builders to the millennials, Lord God, that, Father, you touch us all together, and, Father, we turn our heart back unto you, Father, that we repent of the things and we pray is your name, Lord. Touch us as a nation yet again, that, Father, we will trust in the name of the Lord. And, Father, we come and we cast these cares before you, and we pray for those who are sick in body today. Father, we continue to pray for Miss Paulette, Lord. We thank you that she's here today. And, Father, I thank you that she knows you and you love her, God. I thank you, Lord God, that you've never left her nor forsaken her, that, the, that your love has been faithful to her forever, God. So, Father, I pray you come beside her. 
I pray you heal her of this cancer, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that you could heal of this cancer, Lord God. Be with her, Lord. We thank you, the pharmacist, Lord, but we know you're the miracle worker, God. We know you can do the miraculous, Lord. So we pray and believe in the name of Jesus for a healing upon my sister. We also pray for Sam and Gina, Lord God, for Miss Cheryl, Lord God, and Patty's mom that are all fighting this illness and sickness, Lord, that a healing of God's grace, a miracle of God's word, you could touch and bless and heal those today, Lord. Father, we thank you for those who need a touch, Lord God. As we pray for Wally today, and we ask you to touch him as he recovers from his surgery, Lord. Bless him and come beside him. Take away any pain or discomfort, Lord. And we also pray for Kira today, Lord. Father, I thank you for a young person that's standing up for your name, God. I thank you for a young lady, Lord, the God, that's living her heart, living her life for you, Lord. So, Father, today you know that she's in the hospital and she needs a touch, Lord. And I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that, Father, whatever is ailing her body right now, Lord, you begin to take it away. Father, any tooth or pain or infection, Father, you just begin to take that away. Father, may the doctors and the nurses, Father God, Father, may they find the, the illness, Lord God, and may they give the medicine and may they take it away, Lord. May your miraculous hand touch her, Lord God. Give her strength. We pray for mom today. Father, we pray for mom whose head is with her daughter, her heart is with her daughter, but we pray, Father God, for, for this family. We pray that you come beside them and you heal and touch and make a way. Father God, we thank you for all that we've done. We're praying for a powerful prayer meeting on the 19th, Lord. Father God, that we will, we will come together as a church and pray in the name of Jesus. So Father, we pray all these things. And Lord, I ask you this morning, as we come to the Word of God, as we, in the moments we'll come to the table, Father, we'll come to the communion table. So I pray right now, Lord God, you give us ears to hear what the Spirit is saying. Father, give us ears to hear, even when it's ouch and an amen, Lord God. May I hear what the Spirit is saying and guiding and teaching. Lord, give me a heart to receive. Father, may I, may I be able to be, not have a heart of stone, but a heart of flesh this morning and receive what you have for me and my family and this church, Lord. Give us a heart to receive. Father, I pray this morning that we put our hands to the plow and we're about our Father's business. Father, may we be servants. May, Father, may we come beside you. May we be witnesses in your name. Father, I pray you hide your servant behind the cross and be glorified in Jesus' mighty name. And all God's children said, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hey, just I want to announce somebody. Reverend Kyle Nesbitt is here this morning. So, Pastor Kyle, God bless you. Thank you for coming today. We can say hello to Pastor Kyle. Amen. Amen. Yeah, we can welcome you know, Pastor Kyle, we love him. It's good to see him. Welcome back, Brother Kyle, and thank you for being a part of our service today. Amen. So thank God. And again, I want to thank Pastor Lita publicly who filled in for me last week. It is a blessing. So God's doing some great things. But we're going to get into God's Word today. I brought the big Bible, so watch out. I brought the big You know, I usually have the ultra-thin Bible. Today I brought the big Bible. Because we're going to get into God's Word. We're going to get in the book of Revelation this morning. I want to take you to the book of Revelation today. I want to take you to the book. That's the last book. Everybody goes, oh, I know where that is. Oh, thank you, Pastor. Revelation. It's the last book. I want to take you to chapter, chapter, chapter. What chapter do I want to take you to? I want to take you to chapter 12 today. And I'm going to give you a little bit of synopsis of what's happening as John the Revelator begins to write down, as he begins to witness that he sees these things he sees. Remember, he was called when he was, he was on the Isle of Patmos, and in the spirit, he is brought into the heavens. He said that in the spirit, he's brought up into the heavens. He sees the angel of God. He's brought into the throne room, and God tells him what? To write down, write down the events that he sees. So the book of Revelation is a book that, that John the Revelator, who is upon the Isle of Patmos, through the Spirit of God, is brought into the throne room of heaven, and God begins to give him, begins, begins to show him, begins to describe to him, begins to let him witness the events of a future. And he says, write these things down. 
write these things down. And we can see throughout the book of Revelation that, that John is trying to find a vocabulary to explain the things that his eyes are seeing. If you read the book, you, you, you find out through the book he's saying, it's like, it's like, it's like. He says that all the time. It's like this. It's like that. He's trying. He's reaching to an audience. He's seeing things in front of him that his own vocabulary that he cannot explain. So as he begins to write down, he begins to write down the things that he's trying trying to give his reader, he's trying to give his audience, he's trying to give you and I a description of these future events. So he comes to chapter 12. In chapter 12, I'm just going to give a real brief description. We, we first meet a woman, and, and, and this woman is pregnant in chapter 12. So we meet a woman that's pregnant, and then we find out there's a dragon, right? My son loves reading books about dragons and knights. I said, I got a story about a dragon. Really? Oh, yeah. So Re Revelation chapter 12, we, we first see this woman, and, and she's pregnant, and there's a dragon. Now, this is where it gets a little bit like, okay, okay, we walk, we're people of faith, amen? So, so we see this story, and this woman who is pregnant is about to give birth, and the dragon is waiting to consume, to consume the baby. To, to take it, to, to destroy it, to consume the baby. So, so we later, later learn through study in, in, that the woman it traditionally is, is interpreted as Israel. The woman is Israel. And the baby that's coming out of Israel is Christ, the Savior, the Messiah. And the dragon is the devil who wants to deceive, destroy the promise, the Messiah of God. Now, I know all you theologians are looking at me going, I don't know about that. I see all the eyebrows going up. That's not what I learned in class. But that's what traditionally, that, that the bride, the, the, the woman is, is traditionally referred to as Israel. The 12 stars around her, or either the 12 tribes or the, or the 12 disciples that, that's talked about and debated in some theological circles. But, but traditionally, we see the woman that, that's pregnant as the nation of Israel, and what, she's going to give birth to a child. And that child that Israel gives birth to is the Messiah, amen? And that Messiah comes forth, and we know that Messiah. You and I have received the blessing of that Messiah. You and I today know that Messiah died on the cross. You and I know that Messiah who cried out in the garden, take this cup from me, but that cup wasn't taken, that he drank the cup of bitterness. He stood before Pilate. He died on that cross, and he rose from the grave. Amen? So you and I know that child. We know the victory of that child. We receive it, and we walk in that victory. So this morning, we're going to look at that, that, that the woman is Israel. The 12 stars could be the, the tribes or the disciples. But then we see that she gives birth. And the dragon, the dragon is the devil himself, is Lucifer, is Satan, is, is pure evil. And as soon as she gives birth to this child, the dragon consumes eats, takes up, this tries to destroy the birth and the promise of the Messiah. But then there's a great battle. Then there's a great battle in the heavenlies. There's a great battle that takes place in Revelation chapter 12. First we get the players, the, the John the Revelator is pointing out. He's, he's telling us about what he sees. He, he's writing down what his eyes see. He's telling his readers, he's telling his audience. And he says, I see the dragon and I see the baby and I see the, I see the woman and now I see a battle. And the battle got so hard, the battle got so tough, the battle got so difficult that even Michael, he mentions Michael the archangel. Right there in chapter 12, it says Michael the archangel had to come. And it was a great war. It was a great war. And the devil, the dragon, put a great battle, a great fight. But yet Michael in the heavenlies won this battle. Praise the Lord. Everybody with me this morning? Man, I should preach on Revelations more. Everybody's looking at me right now. And we get to a pronunciation. We get to a place in chapter 10 when John starts to say he's hearing. 
He's hearing right now, he's hearing a, a cry of victory. He's hearing a psalm of praise, if you would. He says that as he saw this battle, and as Michael and the archangel defeated Satan, the, the dragon, as he saw this battle take place, at the end of the battle, he begins to describe something that he heard. And right there in chapter 10, it tells us what? Then I heard a loud voice in heaven. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven. So heaven is crying out. There's a psalm. There's a praise. There's a celebration. There's a shout of victory from the gates of heaven, from the throne room, from the victorious ones in heaven. And let's look what he says. He says, then I heard a loud voice in heaven. Now have come the salvation. Now have come salvation and the power of the kingdom of God. These are the words that he heard. This is what he gives to you and I. This is what he wrote down. This is what he recorded from that great shout of celebration after that battle. He cries out. He says, now this is what I heard. Now, this is the song, the praise. Now has come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of God and the authority of his Christ. The battle is over. They won. They won the battle. And the first thing he hears is this pronunciation as they proclaim victory. But not only are they proclaiming it, they're going to describe how they got it. Let me tell you, not only are they going to proclaim it, but in a few verses they're going to describe how they got it. Let me say that again. Not only are they going to proclaim and celebrate the victory over the dragon and Satan, hallelujah, but in a, just a few short verses, they're going to tell you, this is how we beat the devil. This is how we beat Satan. This is how we won, hallelujah. You listen this morning, church? You with me? Say, say amen. So I want to let you know, this great battle took place. This this. this this great battle in heaven, the baby was being consumed, the mother gave birth, but there was a great war. Michael the archangel comes, and there John the revelator starts hearing this praise, this shout of celebration, and this shout of celebration, this story begins to tell the people, not only do we got victory, not only do we win, hallelujah. See, I'm a Patriot fan, I'm used to winning. See, I see you guys, it's a new concept for a lot of you. All right? See, when you win, never mind, I'll get into that. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And he begins to celebrate. Now I heard the voice in heaven. Not only is he going to tell you he won, but he's going to tell you how he won. Not only is he going to tell you that they won, but they're going to tell you how they won. So let me just point this out. This is what he heard, the song. This is the praise. This is the shout that he heard. Now, has, now have come to salvation and the power of the kingdom of God and the authority of Christ. For the accusers of our brethren who accused us before God in day and night were hurled down. Was hurled down. The one who stood there, the one who accused us, the one who makes accusations, he lost. And not only did he lose, but he was hurled down. Not only did the one, uh, the one that stands and accuses us day and night and day in and day night, that says, "Look at them, they're failures. Look at them, they they've come up short. Look at them, that they don't know. Look at them." The one who accuses us day and night, and that Bible tells us here that he was hurled down. But how was he hurled down? How was he hurled down? And it tells us this in verse 11. And you know verse 11. The church is very familiar with verse 11. But we, do we know how to apply it? And do we know how to live it? Oh, we know how to confess it, but many of us can't find it. But verse 11 is what we know. It tells us here in verse 11, it gives us three principles. Three principles in verse 11 alone that shows us how we overcame, how that great battle had Heaven was one, three principles, three principles that shows us how that great battle over the dragon was won. Everybody with me to say, say amen. amen. You want to know it? I guess not. All right. You want to know those three things? The first thing it tells us is this. Ready? The first thing in verse 11, it says this. They overcame. They overcame. You know your overcomers? 
Do you know when Jacob was wrestling with the angel? You know, when, when Jacob, in Genesis chapter 32, when he was wrestling with the angel, at the end of him wrestling with the angel, you know what he called that place? He said, because I wrestled with God, and I wrestled with man, and I overcame. I wrestled with God, and I wrestled with man, and I overcame. Church, we're overcomers. Oh, well, we're going to go through some battles. We might have some scars. We may have some doubts. But guess what? We win. Amen? And we don't win because of what we did. We win because of what Jesus did. Because that baby, that Messiah, that man would grow to pay the sins of this world for you and I. Amen? So the first thing he tells us is not only about this battle, not only about the players, not only about the people he sees, but then he goes in and says, listen to the song. And the song says this, we've overcome, we've won, the accuser has been cast down. Hallelujah. And let me tell you how we did it. First, you've overcome. Praise the Lord. I have that underlined. Overcome. Now, how did you overcome? You didn't just name it, claim it, and walk away. Let me say that again. You just didn't just name it and claim it and walk away. Wait a second. I don't like that part. He tells us we overcame by three ways. First way is we overcome by the blood. Come on. You overcame him, meaning the dragon. You overcame him, meaning Satan. You overcame him, meaning the evil one. You overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. By the blood of the Lamb. How did we beat? How do we have victory? By the blood of the Lamb. Not by my merit. Not by my goodness. Not by my works. Not by my smarts. Not by my wealth. Not by my politics. Not by my ups and downs. Not by my history and not by my future. I've won because of the blood of the Lamb this morning. I've won because of the blood of the Lamb this morning. Let me say that again because I think some of us think our salvation depends on us. Our salvation was given by the grace of Jesus Christ this morning. I won because of what Jesus Christ done. I won and I keep winning because of what Jesus Christ did. I'm saved and delivered because of what Jesus Christ did. It's not by might nor by power, but it's by Jesus Christ, His Spirit, His Word, His truth. We are saved today because of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And guess what? When we know that grace, when we know that mercy, we are overcomers today. Oh, Jacob. Oh, Jacob wrestled with that angel all day and all night. Oh, let me go. I will not let you go until you bless me. Well, what do you want, Jacob? I want a name change. I don't want to be deceiver anymore, but I want to be Israel. I want to be an overcomer. I want to be an overcomer this morning. And as they showed up in Revelation chapter 12, it says, guess what, overcomer? You overcame. Not because you went to a fancy school. Not because you gave so much to missions. Not because you worked with the children. Not because you overcame for one simple reason. Because Jesus died. So he builds this image. When he reckons back to the words that in this song as the heaven proclaims. He reckons back to the Lamb of God. Now you and I are blessed to realize that, that Jesus is the Lamb of God. But when these words were first penned, they, they may not have always understood that. Now we know Jesus came and he already died, but yet they may not have always understood the fullness of that promise. So this morning as we reckon back, as we look back into these words, we look at the image that he gives. When he says the Lamb of God, he's bringing us back to Genesis, to the Passover story. He's bringing us back to Genesis, to the Passover story. At the end of the seven plagues, when the death angel, when the death angel, when the death angel was coming throughout Egypt, what did he say? He said, take the blood of a lamb and put it on your doorposts. Cover your house. Cover your house with the blood of the lamb. Cover yourselves. Cover your family. Cover your house. Cover your loved ones. Cover yourself with the blood of the lamb. And when the death angel comes, he will see that you're covered. You have a side. You have obedience. You have a gift. You've been covered in the covenant. 
You've been covered in the covenant. You've been covered in the covenant. Why is that important? In a few minutes, we're going to be talking about a covenant. You've been covered in the covenant. It wasn't you who saved you, but it was the promise of God that saved you. And when the death angel came, and he saw that blood, he saw that blood of that lamb on that doorpost, what would he do? He'd pass by. So when John the Revelator is giving us this, as they sing the song of praise, as they sing a song of victory, he says, you overcame, and you overcame how? By the blood of the lamb. Now you and I know that Jesus would come to be the lamb of God. You and I know that Jesus would come to die. Jesus would come to live a life of sacrifice. Jesus would sacrifice everything that he is so you and I could have everything he has. Jesus would sacrifice everything that he is so you and I could have everything he has. He would sacrifice. God so loved the world that he sent his son, and his son took upon this fleshly body, and he walked among us, and he taught among us, and he lived among us. He slept, and he ate, and he preached, he proclaimed, he did miracles, and he showed away. But yet, the Lamb of God would have to go to the altar, and that altar is called Calvary. The one who would know no sin would bear you and I's sin. Has that become background noise? See, we're saved. The dragon and the accuser has been cast down. But not because I'm good. Not because I did anything right. He was casted down because Jesus said in the garden when he said, take this cup from me. Oh, Lord God, if there's any other way, take this cup from me. Oh, God, if there's any other way, oh, take this cup, take this cup. And, but then he humbled himself, and he said, thy will be done. The soldiers would come and drag him away. He'd be beaten to a sieve. They'd open up his body with whips and bruises. He'd be mocked and spat upon, brought naked before family and friends, mocked before loved ones, accused, and he would not even open his mouth. And then they would nail him to the cross by the blood of the Lamb. And that blood that spilled out of Calvary that day is the blood that we put upon our, our doorposts every day. That blood that spilled out of Calvary's cross is the blood that we put upon our cross, our hope, our life, our testimony, our family, our children. That's the blood that we put upon the cross. We stand on that. We hope in it. I'm saved because he died. So as we say this this morning, let us not be too hardy. Let us not look past it quickly, but let us realize what he says. Oh, we got victory in heaven. Oh, we casted down the devil and his angels. Oh, we beat the dragon. You know why we beat him? Because Jesus, the Lamb of God, died for you and I. Amen, church. And then he tells us the next way. The next way they overcame. Not only by the blood of the Lamb, but guess what? By the word. Man, you guys are reading right along. By the word of what? Of their testimony. Let me tell you, I love a good testimony. I do. And in a few minutes, I'm going to ask some people to share a testimony. Let me give you the ABCs of testimony. Ready? Audible. All right, how many have been in a church? And like, <laughs> Amen. I have no idea. Brief. Some people want to preach. Thank you, Pastor. <laughs> I was at a church one time. We were doing testimonies. There was a man there in his late 80s. And I had to hand the microphone down because he was sitting in the middle of the pew. And they, they said, do you have a testimony? He said, I was born. I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> Audible, brief, and Christ-centered, right? Because sometimes... We get audible, we start speaking real life. We want to be brief, but sometimes we start glorifying the old man in the testimony. You know, good thing I got saved. I'd knock these, if I wasn't saved these days, you know, I'd be telling people, you know, you know what I used to do when I wasn't saved? Because I'm going to tell you anything. Listen, let's keep it audible, let's keep it brief, and keep it Christ centered. But our testimony that brought us to become overcomers is not 
our, just our story alone. That's wonderful that we have a story. It's wonderful that we have a tale. It's wonderful that we have an experience. It's wonderful that we have something to share of what we've come through and come out of. Amen? And those stories should be one that blesses and encourages. But our testimony, our testimony that helped us overcome is one thing. We all have it. Our testimony that will save, that will open up doors, that will bring truth, that will pierce the darkness, is not that I went through this and I got that. Those are wonderful, their blessings and their gifts. But the one testimony that we have is Jesus Christ, is the gospel is the gospel. That's our testimony. That's your testimony. That's my testimony. That's the church's testimony. That was our grandparents' and our great-grandparents' testimony. That will be our children's testimony. We have one testimony. Oh, we've got here through different ways. We met the grace of God on our journey in different ways, and we went through things, and they're great. Tell us how you did it. Tell us what you came overcame. Tell us what you surrendered. Tell us how God blessed you and healed you. That's wonderful. But make no mistake, church, our testimony, the thing that matters that lasts forever, is not what I got through, but who I serve. Amen? It's not what I got through. It's who I serve. And today, our testimony is one thing. Jesus Christ and nothing less. Amen? So how did we overcome? We overcome by Christ's death and our testimony. What's their testimony? What was the testimonies of those that fought this battle? The testimony is Jesus. The testimony is Jesus. The testimony is Jesus this morning. Let's, what does this world need? It needs more Jesus. Oh, not a God of thou shalt not. Not a religion that leaves you empty and broken. Not a religion that points down and says you're bad and evil. But they need to know the God that loves them. They need to know a God who died for them. They need to know Jesus Christ, our Savior this morning. They need to have a testimony of not that I went to church with hypocrites. Not that I went to church with backbiters. Not that I went to church with people who distract me and hurt me. But let us have a testimony that maybe let us proclaim Jesus. Amen? Let us proclaim Jesus this morning. You with me? So today, it's wonderful to have a story. Forgiving the nightmare is built upon a story. But it doesn't end with my story. It ends with Jesus. It ends and started and in the middle and throughout the testimony that got us through, the testimony that lifts us up, the testimony that keeps us faithful, the testimony that never lets go. Let us make no mistake about it, but it is by the blood of the Lamb that I'm saved. And my testimony this morning, the only thing that matters is Jesus Christ. Amen? So let us proclaim it. Let us live it. Let us not be ashamed of it. Let us say, I got nothing but Jesus this morning. There's one other principle. This one gets a little harder. This is the one we never quote. Oh, when you're in a church circle, they go, by the blood of the Lamb and the power of your testimony. And then they put a little period there. By the blood of the Lamb and the power of testimony. Oh, how many know those good Christians that quote that? You know that, right? By the blood of the Lamb and the power of the testimony. But guess what? There's something else there. There's another part that brought them victory. There's another part that helped them become overcomers. There's another part of that. See, Jacob knew that other part. Because even when Jacob's hip was wrenched, he didn't stop wrestling. See, Jacob knew that other part. Oh, God, I'm not letting go until you bless me. And they wrestled all day and night, it tells us Genesis chapter 32. And then he touched the hip of his servant. And even then, when that hip went out, when that hip went wrenched, he didn't let go. I'm not letting go because I no longer want to be deceiver, but I want to be overcomer. And in the same way this morning, we see the third part of how this song, this praise, this testimony says this. Says this this morning. They overcame by the blood. They overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of their testimony. So let us keep reading. What was the other way? What was the third way? They did not love their lives so much as they shrank from death. They did not love their life so much that they shrank 
from death. They did not love their life. How has this verse, when we quote it, let's quote it fully, let's quote it true. Oh, we are overcomers by three ways. We're overcomers by three ways. Why? By the blood of the Lamb and by the words of their testimony. And that they did not love their lives so much that they shrank from death. Boy, I like the other two a lot easier. How about you? That third one, that's why we don't say it as much. It's a little bit harder. A little bit more commitment to that third one. Now, I don't know if he's literally saying we have to become martyrs. But Paul said this, let us become living sacrifices. Living sacrifice. You know, sometimes it's easier to just lay on that altar and give it all up. But to be a living sacrifice. So maybe here in this verse as they sang this song of praise, as they quote how they overcame, they're quoting not only by the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, not only the testimony of Jesus Christ, but what did Jesus Christ do? He did not care about his own life, but he died for you and I. He did not care of his own life. How did Jesus Christ overcome? He overcame by that promise. He overcame. He did not love his life so much that he shrank from death. And he died on that cross for you and I. Maybe none of us will ever have to be called to be a martyr. Or maybe you will. Maybe you'll never be called to be a martyr like Jim Elliot was. When Jillian Elliott went to South America and he went to preach the gospel to a tribe and they deceived him. And Jim Elliott went, you've seen the movie, The Head of the Spear, you've heard the testimony. Jim Elliott and his peers went into that village to bring the gospel. And as he was there, they were deceived and they were tricked. And there a spear went through his heart and he gave up his life for the gospel. He gave up his young daughter, Valerie. He gave up his wife, Rebecca, for the gospel. For that testimony, the blood of that servant, not perfect. That blood of that servant, Jim Elliott. The blood of that man, by the grace of God, by the martyr that he gave, would soak that ground. And years later, that village would call for his wife. And the wives of the other men that were massacred. And they, that village would say, come down to South America. And the wife of Jim Elliot and others would come down to South America. And there they planted a church. And there they proclaimed the gospel. And there they taught about the blood of the Lamb. And they taught of the testimony of Jesus Christ. And by the blood of Jim Elliot, by the grace of God, even though he gave up his life, even though he did not get to hold his daughter or go home to be with his wife, by the blood that fell upon that ground, today there's a church, today there's children, today there's a generation that knows Jesus Christ. Amen. Some of you may never be called to be a Jim Elliot. And you're thinking, well, that happened a long time ago. That happened in the early 60s. It wasn't that long ago. Am I right? Some of you may never be called to be a Jim Elliot, but we are all called to be sacrifices, to be living sacrifice, to be living sacrifice. Well, Pastor, what do you mean by being a living sacrifice? Does that mean give more money, do more stuff? To, I love all that, but what's it mean to be a living sacrifice? What's it mean to be a living sacrifice? What's it mean to be a living sacrifice? It means having a testimony and having the blood of the Lamb. When we live by that, when the kids knock at the door and they say, Hey, Mom, I'm going through it. Oh, and we want to we wanna soften the answer. Come on. Because we don't want the kids to get mad at us or keep the grandkids away. So we soften the answer. Well, when the person at work comes to us and says, hey, and we go, hey, I don't want to tell them everything. So I like coffee. How many know that? I mean, I seriously like myself some coffee. Good coffee, bad coffee, up coffee, down coffee. I like beans that are underwater, okay? I like coffee. 
So I've been visiting a, a local coffee shop, and I've been sharing with them um, just about life. Just talking to them about life, community, kids, wife, you know, ups and downs. We talk a little bit of sports. We talk about this. And then they started to come to me, and they asked me to, you know, start to share their problems with me, their relational problems, their Husbands, their boyfriends, their girlfriends, their kids, their dogs, their cats, the bills. They started to share life with me. And I started to tell them, you know, just started to quote the scriptures to them. Now, I never said it says this in Acts or it says that in John. I just started to quote scripture. One girl said to me, you should be a pastor. I said, you think so? I'm thinking about it. Well, I never told them that I was in the ministry and I just kept sharing with them. And the other day... Kaylin and I have a routine. We, well, all the kids, they know when they're with me, we're stopping for a coffee. It's like, you know, it's like the rooster crows, okay? And when they're with me, they get a little hot chocolate. So when I leave the house, hey, Dad, can I go with you? Because they know it's going to be snackage time. And they say, Mom always says no. no sh She's good, though. She's good. I need her. So we were there, and Kaylin had her shirt on that says, I-A-M-P-K. I-A-M-P-K. That's what it says on it. I-A-M-P-K. I am a P-K. So the girl behind the counter looked at her shirt and said, what's a I am P K?" <laughs> and she said, I'm a P-K. I'm a pastor's kid. And the girl behind the counter said, oh, oh, you're a pastor. <laughs> so to be honest, I thought, oh, there goes all the good conversations. And there goes the free coffee. <laughs> I'm a peak. And, and you know, I'm thinking, okay, they're going to hold back from me. They're going to be, they've already got, I was honest. I thought they were going to judge me. You know, you're a pastor. That means you've got to, you know, like, you know, blah, 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 you know. So to be honest, I thought, oh, well, I told them and now, the next day, I go in, because that's what I do. I pray for you. I go on my treadmill, and I go get a coffee. It's spiritual. <laughs> so I walk in, and I, and I do my routine. I get my coffee, and I go up to the counter. And the girl goes, can I show you something? I think, oh, no. Here it comes. And I'm thinking she's going to say, hypocrite. I don't want you talking to me anymore. You don't, you don't appreciate my life. And I thought I was going to get it with both barrels. She opens up her phone and she shows me a picture. She goes, you know, I was talking to my friend today. And I told her we got to pray. And I sent her this picture. And the picture was of a lion, a, a kitty cat, little house cat. And she said, after we pray, we become this. And she showed me a picture of a lion. And, and now when I go in, she starts asking me spiritual questions. I feel like I'm back at work. So what's it mean in the thesis? It's like, oh, man. So for, you know what, though? I'm a living sacrifice. And you're a living sacrifice. Now, some of us will never be called to be a Jamelli. And to be honest, I don't know what I would do at that moment. Only God could help me get through that moment if I was called to be a Jamelli. But I know that I'm called to be a living sacrifice. I know I'm called to care about God by caring about God with all that I am, by caring about God in my life in God with all that I am. I begin to care about others with all that I am. See, when I love God more than I love myself, therefore then I learn how to love others. I learn to love my children, my wife, my church, my people, my story, my testimony, and my land. So this morning, we're going to come to the table. We're going to come to the table of communion. I'm going to ask Pastor Lita if she would come up and help me today, if Brother Dan would come and play something soft and sweet for us as we come to the table, this communion table, where we celebrate the gift of that we have today in Jesus Christ, as we celebrate the covenant that we have, as we confess our victory that we're overcomers of the accuser. But we did not overcome because we were enlightened. 
We did not overcome because we were special. We did not overcome because we're better. We overcame by one simple reason, church. I'm an overcomer because Jesus died on the cross. I'm an overcomer because Jesus died on the cross. And my testimony is not just my experiences. My testimony is not just where I've gone and how God has made a way, even though that's wonderful and beautiful. My testimony, my testimony and your testimony, at the end of it, however you got here, whatever you went through, whatever tears he dried up for you, your testimony ends at the same place mine ends. Jesus. Jesus. I was a divorced woman who went through a bunch of pain, but I fell in love with Jesus. I was an abused kid who grew up in an abuseful house, but I fell in love with Jesus. Oh, I made a lot of poor choices. I'd be in a bottle or be in the grave, but then I fell in love with Jesus. I made a lot of poor choices. I should be in jail, but I fell in love with Jesus. That's our testimony. That's our testimony. By the blood of the Lamb. By the blood of the Lamb and their testimonies. And by not loving our lives so much not loving our lives so much that we shrink away, that we shrink away from the gift of servanthood, of sacrifice. Again, I don't know if you're a Jim Elliot. I don't know if I'm a Jim Elliot. I hope if that day comes, the courage and the spirit would rise up inside of me and I would be as brave as him. I don't know. But what I do know is what Paul's hoping for. I'm a living sacrifice. I'm a living sacrifice. So this morning, may we not love our life so much that we shy away from sharing the testimony, sharing Calvary. We come to this table because it was shared with others. We come to this table to remember the praise. We come to this table because this was confessed by Jesus Christ in an upper room years before, years before it was given to John in the throne room. See, as Jesus sat with his disciples, they didn't understand. They thought they were just going through a traditional holiday. But Jesus was saying, listen, something bigger is happening here. We we're becoming overcomers. And 70 years later, on an Isle of Patmos, a servant of God, we caught up in the Spirit and be shown this heavenly scene of babies and mothers and dragons, and he would hear with a ring in his ear, he would hear the voice crying out from heaven, he would hear the cry crying out saying, I have overcome, I have overcome, I have overcome by the blood of the Lamb. We stand, we connect, we join with all those who will come and will come in the covenant, in the covenant, in the promise, in the gift of the cross of Jesus Christ. So in a few moments, we're going to come to the table. We're going to invite you up to come pew by pew. We're going to ask you to wear your mask. It's all self-contained uh, communion cups. They have two cellophane tops on it. The first one you pull back, the bread is there. The second one you pull back, the, the cup is there. So you'll hold it. We'll invite you up, kind of like you do at a wedding or a funeral. However, we'll call you up pew by pew. You'll come up, just the people in your pew. Pastor the leader will offer it to you. You take it if you want. Then you'll go back, come up center aisle, go down at side aisles, please. We want to be respectful to COVID, COVID restrictions, masks, and all that. We want to stay respectful to that. But let's come and celebrate. Let's come and celebrate the word of the Lord this morning. Father God, I pray today that the testimony that we carry, 
goes beyond the story that we carry. Father, I pray today that the testimony that we carry goes beyond the story, that our testimony is Jesus Christ. Our testimony is the cross of Calvary. And Lord, may I pray, give me the courage to be a living sacrifice. Father, because the words rang true out of heaven that day, and John recorded them for us, that we have overcome. And the liar, Satan, deceiver, the dragon, was cast, was cast down, not because we're strong, not because we're mighty, because of the word, because of the promise, because of the death, because of our Savior, because of the blood of Jesus Christ. I've been made new, set free. The old is gone, the new has come. I'm saved today. I'm delivered and heaven is my home. Jesus, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord. Bless us today. In Jesus' name, and all God's children said, amen and amen. We're going to invite you to come up. Will that first row come? First row come up, Miss Patty. We know it takes a few extra minutes, but this is the safe way to do it. Thank you for your patience. Thank you. God bless you, brother. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come and receive. Come and receive. Come and receive. Again, we're not receiving it because what we've done. We're receiving it because what he has done. We're receiving this gift because of what he has done this morning. We receive it because what he has done. Hallelujah. 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 I wasn't saved by my own works. I wasn't saved by my own might. I wasn't delivered by my own power. But I'm saved and delivered by the grace and the mercy and the promise of Calvary this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The next row, please, will you come? Will you come? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This gift of salvation was given to me. This gift of salvation was given to me upon Calvary's cross where Jesus cried out, Forgive them, Father. Who can take it away from me? Neither not height nor death can take it away. You're adopted. You're in. You've been set free. Now be free. Be free and receive. Hear the testimony. Hear the testimony. Hear the promise and live as a sacrifice. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh Lord, you're worthy, Lord. Oh Lord, you're worthy, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, you're worthy, Lord. Oh Lord, you're worthy, worthy, worthy. Receive, receive this gift today. Don't be deceived. It's not by might nor by power. the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He saved. He delivered. He set us free. He made us new. Oh, look what the Lord has done. This Hallelujah. We stand with the church this morning. Churches all around this world, all around this nation, all around different denominations, 
different fellowships, different tongues, and different tribes, but we stand as believers, as brothers and sisters, and we take part of this gift called communion where we remember the testimony, we remember the overcomers, and we remember the sacrifice. As we stand, we stand knowing this gift that you and I have received has nothing to do with who I am, but it had everything to do with who God is, amen, and how God so loved us that he gave his son so we could proclaim and stand in this gift called salvation today, and we have it. So this morning, we celebrate this gift that we have, but this gift allows us to do a few things. As Paul brought this gift to the church of Corinth, he reminded them that this gift is not one to 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 beat us up, but it's one to inspect us. Aren't you glad for inspection? You don't have to go to a guru. You don't have to go to an iman. You don't have to go to a preacher. You don't have to go to a pastor. But the Holy Spirit says, inspect yourself. Not, are you saved or unsaved, but inspect yourself. Are there places growing hard that he wants to turn into softness? Are there places that God's saying, I've asked you to go, but you're still lagging behind? Are there places where the the hurts and rejections of life is becoming louder than the faith and grace? Oh, this morning, I'm going to ask you today, today, will you receive this gift of communion? Not because of what you have done, but will you take that moment to inspect your own heart? Say, Lord, am I where you've called me to be? Is there somebody in your life that you need to reach out to? Somebody that you need to give forgiveness or receive forgiveness. This is the gift of the communion table so that we can inspect ourselves, not out of fear, not out of damnation, but out of love, out of love. Say, inspect your heart and make sure that it only has one room in it for one. May that be God this morning. So we come and we do that today. We also come and we remember what he's given to us. We remember the testimony. We remember the sacrifice. And we remember the gift. That's what we remember as we come to the table. Not only do we inspect ourselves, not only do we come here with a genuine heart, but with a self-inspecting heart saying, God, show me, reveal to me. Lord, teach me your ways, O God. Father, help me to be more like you. Not only do we do that, but we're also reminded of the gift that Calvary gave us. We're reminded that the blood shed and and the bread was given. We remember that the sacrifice of the covenant. We remember the hope of Jesus Christ. This is what we are called to do. Now, wherever Christians have met for 2,000 years, wherever Christians have met, in large places or small places, in public places or private places, the gift of communion has reached out. So this morning, we join that great tapestry. We're in that great choir. We stand with our brothers and sisters, and we long to stand and say, God, may we drink from the cup of life. In the Passover supper, there are basically four four to five cups of wine that they drink after every part. Large cups of wine that, that they drink. And at this part of the Passover meal, that Jesus reached out, and the cup that he took was called the cup of redemption. He reached out, and there was the third cup in the supper where he reached out, holding in his hand the cup of redemption. Now the Jews that celebrated that Passover longed that someday the Redeemer would come. And as Jesus held that, he said, I am your redemption. And he reminded him as he drank from that cup of redemption that he has redeemed us. He has redeemed us. He has set us free. He has made us new. He redeemed us. So this morning we celebrate this at this table today that we celebrate the promise of the cross. We celebrate the hope of Jesus. We celebrate our love for God. And may we walk in the covenants of his promise. Amen? So let us prepare our hearts today as we get ready to receive this morning's communion. Let us... I got it. Praise the Lord. It's not on the radio anymore. Let us peel back that first cellophane. And today we hold in our hands the emblem of the body of Christ, the emblem of the sacrifice, the emblem of the hope. Jesus would look at the disciples and say, who do they say I am? 
And Peter would answer, but you are the Christ. And Jesus would say, Peter, upon that rock I build my church. Upon that confession that you know that I am the Christ, I will build that church. As Paul taught this in the book of Corinthians, he would say, for what I receive from the Lord is what I also pass on to you. On the night that Jesus Christ was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body which was broken for you. I want you to know that this morning. His body was broken for you. Not you as perfect, not you as finished, not you as having everything put together. His body was broken for you. He loved you yet when you were a sinner. He called you. He delivered you. He, just, he led you. His body was broken for you this morning. Our testimony, the Lamb of God, and our sacrifice. We are overcomers. Let us partake as we pray for the emblem of the bread this morning. Father God, we thank you that you died on the cross. Father, we thank you that you paid the price we could not pay. Father, we thank you that we're overcomers, not by our own might, but by how you died upon Calvary's cross today, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, for the gift of salvation that you paid fully and completely. Thank you, Lord God, for your life and my, my salvation. I, part, I take this, Lord God. Cleanse my heart. Inspect it, Lord God, that I may take the log out of my own eye before I take the twig from my brothers. Lord, we thank you today that by your stripes we are healed, and by your grace we are made new. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's partake of the bread this morning. In the same manner, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it and remember me. As often as you drink it, do it in remember, remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you, I want you to hear that, you live in sacrifices, you Lamb of God, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Lord, we thank you for shedding that blood. We thank you for the new covenant. We thank you that you sealed us with a seal that nothing can erase, Lord. Not even my own failures. Not even my own doubt, Father God. For your love is plentiful. Your love is merciful. So, Father, we thank you that you shed your blood. And, Father, in a few weeks, we will celebrate the resurrection. Father, because there can't be an Easter if there's not a Good Friday. So, Father, there can't be a resurrection if there isn't a death. And you died for us, Lord God, so we could know life. So, Father, we trust in you. We hope in you. We receive from you the Redeemer and the hope that we find in you. Thank you for your blood that was shed for us. Heal those that touch those. Bless those that go before us. Thank you for your forgiveness. In Jesus' name, we receive this together, and we let us take Amen. Praise the Lord. I think mine was a little hard, I think. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God is good. God is good. The psalmist would say, Praise the Lord. For our God is good in the love of the everlasting love of God. Praise the Lord. Our God is good. The psalmist would say it. The gospels would proclaim it. The revelation would remind us. You know what we're called, church, to do as we leave here? Stand to your feet. See, the psalmist would confess it. The gospels would proclaim it. You may rise. We're going to close in prayer. The psalmist would confess it. The gospel would proclaim it. The revelation would remind us. You know what our job is? To live it. The psalmist would confess it. The gospels would proclaim it. And the revelator, he'd remind us. Your job and my job is to live it. Live this gospel. Live this testimony. 
live this sacrificial life. Let them see Jesus in you. Let your words reflect the goodness of God. Live it. Live it. Live it in the aches and pains. Live it in the doubts and fears. Live it. Live it. Live it. Even when life is hard, live it out. Live it out. Because he, the psalmist, would confess it. The gospels would proclaim it. The revelation would remind us. But for me and my house, I want to live it. I know I'm not going to live it perfect. I know I'm going to mess up. And when I do, I remember the everlasting love of God that endures forever. And I remember that I overcame. Not because I had a good day or a bad day. I overcame because Jesus said, it is finished. Overcomers, live it. Live it. Even when that body is aching, live it. Even when Satan comes and prowls like a lion and tries to deceive you, live it. And everything seems like you're going well that day, it's probably not. But leave it. Live it then. Father, I pray as we leave here today, we leave living the gospel. Father, may we not just study it, but may we be doers of it. Father, I pray today we leave delivered, set free, made new. Father, we leave, Lord God, knowing that we are your children. And nothing, nothing, nothing could steal that from us today, Lord God. I thank you for the grace. I thank you for the love. I thank you for Calvary. I thank you the stone rolled away. I thank you for Jesus. Go before us, Lord, and bless us. And may we live the gospel. In Jesus' name, all God's children said, amen. Give a lot of clap offering, church. Amen. I love you. These altars are always open. It's my privilege to pray with any of you. If you want to come to the altar and pray that you'll be a person to live it, I'll pray with you. We pray just blessings upon one another. I'll pray with you. But if you got to slip out, I understand Pastor Peter and I are here to pray with you. But if you got to go, I love you. And believe it or not, snow coming down. See, as soon as I started to preach, it cast it down. I looked out and there was snow. But God is good. I love you, church. You got it in you. You got it in you. Don't be tricked by the devil who says, you earn this. It's a gift. When you have a gift, who can take it away? Believe me, my kids, I get gifts. They don't want me to have it taken away. It's a gift. Receive your gift. God loves you. These altars are open. Hallelujah. Father bless us. In Jesus' name.